I want to tell some stories about bicycling. Um, one day last summer, my friend Maya and I uh, got on our bikes and went down to a food truck festival down in Southside Park. And uh, we know each other through bicycle advocacy work. And so the conversation throughout the afternoon kind of looped around the question of why is bicycling, uh, why is it so important in Sacramento? Why does it matter? And um, Maya is one of the smartest and most connected people I've met. And so I asked her, what is the most uh, pressing concern that you, uh, you see facing the city? And she said, it has to do with consolidating the various funding streams for mental health services. And I said, um, how does bicycling fit into that picture? And she said, well, bicycling helps us care about our community. And I felt like I was hearing the grand unified theory about bicycling. Um, I, I work to influence state and local government on behalf of making bicycling a form of transportation, of everyday transportation, and I believe deeply in the benefits of bicycling for personal health and for air quality and for traffic congestion, but I tend to think about those benefits the way I think about the benefits of complex carbohydrates. Um, they're valuable, but they're not all that inspiring. And so, um, for me, bicycling isn't just about health or the environment or uh, claiming a place on the road or even about the bicycle itself. Um, for me, bicycling is more about how we connect with ourselves and connect with each other. About three years ago, my uh, elderly 92 Honda Civic uh, gave up the ghost. I couldn't afford the repairs that were necessary to get the car smog. The repairs were more expensive than the value of the car, and I couldn't afford to replace the car. So pretty much overnight, my bicycle became my sole means of transportation, and I waited for my life to become miserable, and, and it didn't. Um, I was able to get to and from work, I could get groceries, I could run errands, I could go do fun things with friends, and when the weather turned rainy, I got a rain, a, you know, a rain jacket and some rain pants, and I found I kind of liked riding in the rain, and actually it made me feel like this happy kid again. So four to five miles seems to be about my um, range for uh, riding my bike for most everyday things. I live near 2nd Avenue and 24th Street, um, so for me that's about, um, Sac State on the east end and Ikea on the west end, and pretty much everything that I uh, want to do, I can do within that radius. Um, I'm very lucky to be living where I live. And it takes me about 20 to 30 minutes to ride um, that distance. And um, I, was just re I just realized the other day that that was about as long as I was willing to drive anywhere um, to do my everyday thing. So switching to a bicycle didn't even really add any travel time to my life. Um, it just shrunk the map down. And it also, of course, slowed me down quite a bit. Um, and pretty quickly I discovered that I, um, I couldn't rush the way that I tended to do. Um, rushing on a bicycle is a little bit like running upstairs. Um, you know, it seems like a good idea and you pay a price for it almost immediately. So I, I found myself beginning to uh, get a lot more organized and also a lot more patient. Bicycling requires you to, uh, to pay attention because, of course, if you don't pay attention, you fall down or you run into something or somebody runs into you. Um, but in the course of paying attention, I noticed that, that I was very much aware of the sensations of riding my bike, of the muscles flexing and my breathing and the wind in my ears and the play of light and shadow on the street. And, you know, you can smell people cooking dinner and you can overhear conversations on the street and there's dogs barking and, and lawn mowers and music playing. And um, I, was, I was really aware of, of how I move through space. And I, I found myself very much connected to my um, immediate setting in a way that was very, very vivid to me and also very intimate. With that intimacy comes uh, vulnerability. I'm traveling without the protection of a, uh, of a metal shell, and so that brings me into a, a more direct relationship with uh, the other people on the street, the person in the car, the person in the crosswalk, or the person on the other bicycle. 
figuring out how we're going to share that um, limited real estate in the roadway uh, starts to feel like kind of a civic dance. The streets are the place where we meet each other and we work it out. Um, and some of the time that doesn't work out so well, but a lot of the time it does. Uh, one time I was riding west on R Street and I come up to 10th Street and there's a woman on her bicycle stopped at the stop sign out in front of the Fox and Goose. And, we, and I pull up beside her and we're waiting for this guy coming up 10th Street and he pulls up to us and he stops on 10th Street. He doesn't have a stop sign. And so we both automatically start waving him through like traffic cops. And we catch each other doing this and we, we laugh about it. And then get on our bikes and head down R Street and chat about riding our bikes in downtown Sacramento. And a couple blocks down, she says, well, this is where I turn to go home. And I said, well, I'm heading down to the Crocker to go to a film. And so um, on, on we went. and and. You know, we had this uh, brief little uh, experience specifically because neither of us was in a car. We connected for just a moment because we were on a bicycle. Um, my friend Dale likes to uh, refer to himself as a brown-skinned redneck. Um, he's Filipino and he's all about firearms and self-defense and warfare. And when he moved to Sacramento from Los Angeles several years ago, he started riding his bicycle more, and he um, found a group of people, and he started riding with them regularly. And it was only later that he discovered that he was taking part in the monthly um, critical mass ride. This is the um, <laughs> this is the Sacramento's version of the anarchist bicycle ride that takes place in San Francisco and other places, and. It, this quietly just blew his mind because he was having a good time and he really liked the people that he was riding with. And to me, this is the, this is the beauty of having to pay attention when you're riding a bicycle. Um, there's no room for ideology. Bicycling is an experience, it's not an ideology. Um, Dale was telling me recently that he heard from his friends in, in L.A. Um, these are retired cops and hell's angels, and, and they said they just can't believe that he's out there riding his bicycle with a bunch of hippies and Democrats. But he said, you know, everybody's so friendly and, and, and tolerant, and, and, and I can see his worldview starting to change. And I think bicycling deserves a lot of the credit for that. Bicycling shows us a way that we can connect to our communities. When we go out on our bicycles, we share an experience, and we, uh, we learn from that experience. We learn about ourselves. We learn about each other. We learn about the, the place where we're at just by doing it. We, we don't have to talk about it or think about it. And, you know, that to me is the transformative potential of bicycling. Think about it if, if a lot more people started doing that. That's the way that bicycling can help us care about this community. Thank you very much. Thank you.